Today is autumn equinox. There is a chill in the air and I have a curious feeling of being becalmed at the tipping point between seasons. The height of summer is long past. The depth of winter is to come. We are exactly halfway between the two. Our corner of England is within UK's National Forest, woodland and water regenerating from open cast coal mining. What was once a hole in the ground is now returning to nature. This is quarter mile thicket. Here are lakes and ponds. Here are meadows and glades, woodland and hedges. Around me, the final days of summer have passed. Autumn is slowly undressing the trees and hedges. Fungi appear as if from nowhere. In quarter mile thicket, the cool of the night lingers throughout the day, trapped amongst the damp tangle. Here is rot and decay, shadows and odd noises. Common lizards live nearby, but have withdrawn under my beach chopping block. Cold-blooded and barely moving, they will wait out autumn and winter until warmth comes back to the earth. The glades and meadows are silent. Autumn grass mowing was completed some weeks ago. Summer's carpet packed away for another year. As the leaves turn to gold, autumn reminds us of jobs unfinished. But there is only so much hay that can be made. And these autumn days reveal summer's toll. The perennial wheel of maintenance is still turning. The lakes are empty of waterfowl. Mallard, tufted duck, coot and little grebe have slipped away to their winter haunts. Only secretive moorhens remain, unseen and treading invisibly amongst the reeds, clucking their haunting calls. With little to see on the water, I move my filming hive from lakeside to woodside.
the glade is empty. The year is getting older, a reminder that I and all those around me are on the same path. Like every season, autumn holds a mirror to our lives. If we are depressed, there are ample signs to affirm our feelings. Decay is everywhere. A thousand and one short summer lives have ended. There is only cold and wet lying ahead. But if we are hopeful, autumn rewards our optimism. Fruits are swelling around seeds that will germinate in the spring. There are still a few flowers and insects. And look at this muntjac fawn. Even as winter approaches, it is full of the joys of spring. I decide to pass the night in the wood. This is my brother-in-law's retired work van, emptied and converted into a thicket cabin, warmer and drier than a tent, a cocoon in which to curl up, protected from autumn chill. I shall not overnight in the woods again until next spring, so I savour the evening glow. But dampness sneaks around on the back of autumn air and clouds gather. Just before dusk, in the thicket's gloom, a badger examines the air. And as the last light fades, a badger family is above ground, gathered in an ecstasy of scratching. Soon they are joined by another family. The young are playful, but an old and tired sow badger sleeps amongst the chaos. A tawny owl calls, and in the distance there are rumblings in the sky. Surrounded by the thicket and flanked by thousands of trees, I am plunged into flashing darkness, and soon comes heavy rain. I am insulated from the torrent that rattles through the night. Just yards away, as I sleep, a badger endures the downpour. Yesterday was autumn equinox. Today begins our journey into winter.